tournament, they can find themselves just one game away from elimination. I'm B filling in for Breaky CPK this weekend, and with me we do have Emperor of the Honcast staff. Emp, game number one was uh, quite the game, back and forth all the way. Eventually, though, Team Psycho, the underdogs, managing an upset. It was back and forth all the way, which, if they fix up the drafting errors that they made in game one, I, I feel like maybe that actually speaks well for uh, Trey Croner here in this game two matchup. Uh, if they don't give him such a skewed advantage, I mean, I feel like they honestly uh, kind of threw that game away just uh, logistically just due to the nature of their pick. So uh, Master of Arms being locked up right away here on, on the first side, knowing the strength of Master of Arms when you are the Legion side, uh, going to see how Rally is addressed and how Ophelia is addressed as well. Ophelia not being banned out yet, but with Master of Arms taken in that lock pool, sort of forces the Hellborn team to... Uh, Maybe, okay, they lock both. I'm still thinking they'll favor the Ophelia pick of the two, but they no longer get that guaranteed Master Arms Ophelia combination. Uh, they can sort of bait him out with enticing other picks here inside of the Master and try to sneak it out and buy, but it's hard to say. So, that being said, they might want to lock some more powerful heroes here to treat them as effective bands, almost being like, okay, if you want the Master of Arms, you have to give up. Uh, well, that's something for me, man. Powerful. <laughs> we could uh, we could put the pebbles in there. We could put the, 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 the deadwood in there. We could put the engineer in there. Because they would have to pick tempest master, so that you could just there's yeah. The point is there's tundra, there's deadwood, there's rally. There's tons of powerful picks on the board still. Uh, I'm expecting rally to go unlock here unless it's by the hellborn team. Maybe hoping they can sneak him away as a first pick on the legion side. Uh, I expect to see him banned. I, I don't expect to see it given up, but honestly, just anything can happen. So, Well, we'll have to see here as Alucard does get his sixth and final lock momentarily. Parasite and Torture were added in there, so a couple strong int heroes and three junglers in that lock pool. The fourth very strong jungler in Keep of the Forest, uh, going to be banned out in the blind bang phase. And there's Magnus to round out the lock pool. So talking about those uh, possible bands essentially i mean you could definitely see one of those heroes as a band although parasite is not the most most powerful in that lock pool so we'll see there's definitely some wiggle room as we do have the bands coming out now yeah kind of surprised i haven't seen any other teams really i've seen xtdm run it but not too much else besides that running that suicide scout over i mean sagreen showed it was very very powerful still and effective at disrupting junglers and doing a great job. So surprised we haven't actually seen other teams pick it up since uh, Keizu showcased its strength. Yeah, definitely going to be uh, looking forward to seeing that pick up more often. But right now, some uh, very aggressive heroes being banned out between the Pebbles and Nymphora. So that combination going to be removed. Soul Reaper, once again, going to get taken out by Rally? Team Psycho. Rally being left on the board. I mean, other strong heroes as well. They have like one this. more ban, man. Deadwood, Fade, still available? Yeah, I know, but it's yeah, I, still Ophelia, Rally, and potentially a Master. Uh, they should be able to get Master this time. But this could be insane, man. they they got to respect this Rally. Will they go for the first pick? I don't know. We'll see. There's the Wretched Hag ban. And one more right now. Uh, it, they have to ban out Rally here, right? Like, I mean, Deadwood and Fade are still on the board, so maybe they're just really favorite. I, I honestly think Rally's just... Black Rider. Rally, going to be first pick material here for the Legion team. I'm done. I, <laughs> I'm actually out, so enjoy this cast. Uh, Emperor uh, is clearly not a fan of Alucard's drafting strategy here. Um, I... I, mm, I mean, the last game, they got extremely heavily outdrafted by giving up that Master of Arms Tempest, uh, excuse me, Master of Arms Ophelia Rally combination. This time they're going to be able to get at least two of those heroes once again. Yeah, Fate is on the board at least, so it's in the biggest of problems. I just, I don't see the Play Rider as being like an issue or being the issue. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, that's why I don't understand. In a sense, they could be baiting it out, so okay, you take Rally, we get this instead. If that's the case, then we'll see what they have uh, in mind for their first and second picks. Uh, <laughs> why is it anyone picking Rally right now? Why did Why did Hammerstorm just get picked up instead of a Rally? 
I don't get it, man. Emperor, I'm, I'm the only one around here who cares. <laughs> is this a game I, right I now? Don't really Emperor? Mean to criticize. It actually seems so offbeat. I mean, I do understand it, but I honestly think Hammerstorm is very one-dimensional in a lot of ways. He, he can be affected by. I honestly think. I I know how you feel right now, man. I'm just not. I'm just not sure. I I just feel like there, there's even a fade on the board still. Like a lot of options, so I feel like they're I mean, playing. I say, they want more of a semi carry. I mean, Hammerstorm will fill that route. Uh, Wretched Hag was banned out. I a lot of times like to see uh, if I do do see the rallies not even picked up. <laughs> Emperor has left the building, ladies and gentlemen. Um, instead, these teams are going to be favoring Demented Shaman Bubbles and the Silhouette Pick. I mean, Vampira and Rape both play very very competent silhouettes. Uh, but this Hellborn team right now, I am seeing pretty minimal early and mid game potential. I mean, the thing is, if you're going so, if you're gonna go for the silhouette pick, man, if you're gonna go for the silhouette pick, why do you need the hammer storm at yeah, that point? Agree. Why not just do the rally? Who can do more for your team and, and do it better? Like I, I, honestly, there, there's no reason to need to pick up the, the hammer storm. That even even the fade, I. I Oh, Hemper, I I think he just hung up the call. I think he's. Uh, I think wait, he, can you hear me? <laughs> no. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. No, Matt, no, no, we're fine. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm cool. I don't, I don't even know, man. I don't even know what's going on right here. But the Hellborn team going with a pretty interesting strategy here. Going to pick up the Magnus Aluna at the end, uh, along with that Ophelia. So, yeah. Going to be running that uh, Suicide Magnus most likely. Hammerstorm and Luna in the middle lane, short lane silhouette with the Ophelia available for it. a potential aggressive dual lane middle. And there's the MOA last pick out of the lock pool. Uh, once again, though, the Legion team looks pretty strong. Yeah, both sides actually having a pretty well balanced lineup. Uh, Gonna have to see the role which Master Arms is fulfilling. I think if it's the same as last game, uh, Lulpix was playing more of that supportive Master of Arms and. Looking at more of a carry demented shaman in this game, along with a point hero in that deadwood, just looking to burst people down at the start. Uh, still, I mean, okay, deadwood is notorious for just sort of uh, seeing heroes like deadwood and other those bursty, uh, the bursty mid game heroes contributing to the downfall of silhouette. Who, uh, you know, as she's trying to farm up for her nullstone, or even afterwards, she just gets one shot before she can carry a game. Uh, we're gonna have to see how they actually choose to get around and uh, manage the the silhouette at that point. So. Yeah, we're going to have to see. Indeed, but Vampire will be playing this one. And uh, I've seen Vampire's silhouette before, and I've been quite impressed. Uh, when you have somebody like Rampe on the team who's very, very well known for playing that silhouette, and you opt to give it to Vampire instead, you've got to have some pretty serious confidence in this hero of player combination. But we'll see how effective it's going to be. And right now, I mean, the Legion team definitely uh looking like it's going to be a solo demented shaman you see that master of arms deadwood lane in the middle as uh, rocky balboa heads into the suicide lane boots plus a ward one more time for the little bubbles and uh, bubbles versus silhouette this is definitely a lane situation where if the silhouette does not get sufficient regen early bubbles can actually do pretty well against the silhouette in terms of harass and do a potential kill yeah, you see a lot of times the life tube actually is not picked up by the, the silhouette that uh, the silhouette actually gets out harassed and now with the buff of bottle on side lane heroes. Uh, given the fact that there is the, the, the side rune and bottle being additional extra regen, it leads more to the fact that silhouette does need to pick up a little bit of extra health. Does not have pulled regen in a scenario like this. So we will definitely be keeping a close eye on it. Keep in mind silhouette did receive a little bit of a nerf too. Uh, it wasn't major honestly, but a little bit of a nerf to her laning presence there in the salvo giving uh, if I'm not, it gives less attack speed, right? Yeah. Um, got another so you take nerf. some sort of nerf. Armor. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure it was a salvo attack speed. And it, it's not major considering that attack speed sort of. I believe it was the level returns. four attack speed reduced by like 50 no, or something like that. No, I thought it was the early level ones. That really? The laning. Am I crazy? Yeah. Yeah, I you're might probably be crazy. crazy. I'm looking at it right now for you. I'm pretty sure it's the early level ones. It was it was more of a one of the more obscure yeah. It went from two fifty to one fifty, 
Okay. So from 250, 300, 350, 400 to 150, 200, 250, 300. So it's overall taking okay. down 100 all, level, uh, all levels. There you go. Uh, honestly, due to the tapering effects of attack speed, the higher you go, it takes more attack speed to hit the next frame advantage on it. So uh, not the biggest of deals, but it is still something. Well, right now we are just going to go ahead and sit in this pause for a little bit, uh, taking a look at the other likely matchup between Magmus and Demented Shaman here in the bottom lane. Uh, Magmus already being stacked a little bit of regen with an additional set of Blight Stones, as well as grabbing two wards. Uh, how do you see Rape faring up against the Denver Pro? Uh, thanks to the pulled regen, should be able to get a little bit of farm early on, but it is a melee against the Demented Shaman. Demented Shaman, uh, of course, is given the laning advantage. Gonna have to see how he sort of tugs the wave if he gets lane advantage and how he manages it. It's not that she like wants to spam heal bombs on him or anything, because then she would sacrifice lane positioning. And he does have, you know, once again the pull to regen, so he'll be able to last hit at the tower a bit more effectively. But yeah, in general, uh, Denver Pro should fare very well. Well, we'll have to see down there how well Rampe is going to be able to do if he gets forced out, anything like that. Uh, Tempest could, of course, do a little bit of rotation. We already saw this in the last game where we had a long lane Magnus and a uh, safe jungle Tempest that they were able to get a little bit of rotation and a kill onto that Magnus at least once in that bottom lane. We'll see if Zoller's going to be able to replicate what we did see coming out of Archer Tiger in the last game. And this mid, or the mid matchup most likely going to be Deadwood and Master of Arms uh, against Hammerstorm Aluna. I don't know. There's that should be what's happening. You don't see the uh, aggressive pseudo tri lane happening for the Hellborn team? Uh, no, probably not. They definitely have the option to, and it's something I like to run. Uh, I mean, definitely, given the... F Taking a look here, solo and... No, I know, because they have pulled regen here on mag. Let's well, and he... On. No, and you see Silhouette heading to the top lane, so... And he, he already has the ward on him, so that pretty much told us what was going to happen. Yeah. But uh, Deadwood and Master of Arms versus Hammerstorm of Luna, of course, a lot of lockdown potential with that two-second AoE stun on Hammerstorm. If we do see Alucard hitting some big stuns, then uh, that could be a very real possibility to pick up a kill, maybe on the Master of Arms or something. And how about this? Hammerstorm is heading into the bottom lane and does have a mana potion on him. I, I don't know. They, they Are they going to rotate right now, or what's going on? Um... I mean, he has a, he has the hatchet build though, so maybe if they are planning to, it, it is it is possible. I mean, Magmus is still down there though, is placing the ward. Uh, looks like just a little bit back up for now, and looks like Mag. I mean, should, they honestly should be rotating to mid. I, I don't see any other way. Ophelia hasn't come down here yet. She looks like she's playing on jungling on her side. It's just them moving together throughout the enemy team, right. making sure they get that ward off and gonna go from there. So. Yeah, no big deal. I like the uh, ward position here by Rampe actually cutting down a couple of trees so that he is going to be able to get uh, good vision of this entire bottom river area, gets the rune vision, and also blocks this camp. So with a couple of tree cuts right there, a very, very efficient ward. And this is going to really uh, start to annoy Zolar as two of his camps are now blocked. Only has the medium camp here on the far side. And Magnus gets spotted out by Master of Arms, but Rampe not even remotely choosing to flinch. Not yet. Um, just gonna keep an eye. I'm, I honestly just want to watch this Demented Shaman Mag at the early levels just to make sure uh, it plays out all right. I mean, they they have a very uh, mid lane. The the, the Hammerstorm Maluna is a more streamlined combination, at least uh, in comparison to the Master of Arms Deadwood. I, I think that in terms of putting out a little bit safer ass here early on, levels one and two, they have a bit of an edge. But as as it goes on, it's gonna be honestly a little bit of the runes, a little bit of the uh, jungle involvement to see. Uh, which way the lanes take, as we usually see the 2v2 mid in most of these even matchups is... Except for rare circumstances where I, see, I feel like... Sometimes you see like that Pebbles Glacius lane or the Pebbles plus whatever versus Fade lanes. Due to how fragile Fade can be, you see the Pebbles lane usually winning out without any interference. Uh, a couple other matchups, but usually in these mid matchups it just comes down to uh, both teams farming. It comes down to a little bit of the runes, but mostly the, the jungle involvement. Whoever gets involved first sets the pace of the lane and from there on out it snowballs. Well, we'll have to see how fast those jungles do get involved. And I, I want to point something out in this middle lane that Hammerstorm actually came to the lane before Master of Arms got there and just dropped a hammer right onto Deadwood's face, forcing out all of the regen from Deadwood already. Hammerstorm also had to fall back and use a health and mana potion himself as Master of Arms did come in and actually help out with a charge shot and hammer 
took a lot of damage because he does not have a shield. So both of these uh, melee players starting to run out of region, but Hammer bringing more, he's going to be all right, while Deadwood's having to play pretty cautious. Only has enough mana for one stun right now. If he had two, he could probably put a lot more harass uh, onto the Deadwood while he's trying to pick up farm for his bottle. He should be waiting for level three here before he stuns. They honestly should keep the harass up and force him to fairy region. What's actually coming out right now in the courier? Uh, just some blight mana stones. Potions. And oh, armor. Hammer actually in trouble. There's the two-man stun, though. And charge shot comes in as well. The auto attack damage, but Ophelia looking to turn this one around. Has a Minotaur available. Tempest is here, though, so both junglers coming out to play. In the end, they will both fall back, and Hammerstorm takes a health potion. Still very low on mana, though. Let's make sure he doesn't get hit here by anything to interrupt that regen. Uh, no, uh, no, no uh, rotten grass, not rotten grass, but uproot uh, from the Deadwood Susan have Tree, Oak Bolt, to interrupt it, so not really going to be an issue. Uh, has his bottle, though. Meanwhile, Deadwood needs 150 more gold, so uh, I yeah, very clear that Hammerstorm is applying that pressure. Has a couple of stuns now left to sort of force Deadwood off the wave, and he's actually in a pretty bad position. We take a look at where the uh, the creep wave is. So really have that the defensive positioning that he needs in order to uh, farm up the wave and get his bottle at this point. So, um, yeah, I mean, they should apply the pressure. He's back beyond the creep wave. It wouldn't make sense to go hurt him. I mean, he doesn't have regen for rotten grass. I mean, you can use your hammerstorm stun. I guess they don't want to push out the lane uh, yeah. too much here. Preferring that lane position right now, but Deadwood will go ahead and pick up those final CS. Going to fly the bottle out here in just a moment, but oh, unfortunate. Uh, Null Talisman Grave Locket recipe flying out to Demented Shaman, and uh, Deadwood's probably pretty sour about this. It's going to delay his bottle timing till after the four minute rune. That's true. I mean, I'm looking, that courier will not be back in time. Uh, we mentioned before, he actually has no additional regen right now, so. Yeah, this is. A, I, I, I think they should just put out the stun combo at this point, man. I mean, they don't have any additional. Oh, Magnus regen. is dead. Bottom. He has. Even using the courier for the scout, that's actually the opposite courier. Um, Demented Shaman. Bringing him. Wow. Bringing him eyes. He has boots. He has. Uh, he has a stun up here. I guess he's not he's dead. Be fine. I guess he's not dead. Does need a lava surge there, and will oh, get away. That follow up and tangle. That was a little bit yeah. too close. Uh, my comfort. He actually had that stun for a while, but. Yeah, either way, he's going to get out and roam towards his bottom rune, uh, picking up the invis oh here. Luna God. actually, no, securing it for Luna, who is going to bottle it and pass it off to this Magnus, who's going to be invisible and rotate mid for the pain. Yeah, unfortunately, he's not going to find a Deadwood on low life as Deadwood went to town, opting uh, not to really wait for that bottle. Just going to go ahead and pick that one up in town as the courier did deliver wait. a bottle up into the top lane. Somebody bought him a TP, though, and Bubbles is going to be able to get a kill here, though. Great job. There is the bloodlust, and that's exactly what we talked about. With this silhouette uh, really not bringing out enough regen, even with that life tube, she does go down. I, wait, life she does tube. not have a life tube. I could have sworn she just had a life tube. Middle lane, though. Hammerstorm stun coming out onto Deadwood, and Nahoy Kend is in some trouble, but the Rotten Grass going to be used right here and will survive for right now. The counter kill is possible. This Hammerstorm is trying to get away with the uh, bottle, but Aluna is going to be the one going down right here. A double tap in the middle lane, and wow, that certainly worked out well for the Legion team. You know why? They saw him picking up the end of this. They knew that, and so they were baiting it in all reality. So because they were ready... Hellborn team was not expecting them to, to react as they did, so uh, nice idea in coming in for the gank, but didn't realize that the, it was actually playing along uh, the Legion side's plan the entire time. Yep. Power throw coming out right here. Master of Arms going to take some pressure, but uh, just like that, up 3-0, and so it does have that life tube now, so I guess she yeah, sure. she'd purchased it on the courier, that's what I had seen, and uh, started flying it out, so... Like we said, she ran out of regen, didn't get that life tube fast enough, didn't fly herself any more regen. Bubbles got the bottle and snagged the early kill, so Legion yeah, team rough. in a good position. Very rough, considering how uh, how much uh, that Solit's actually out CSing the bubbles, made the lane sort of neutral at this point. Has a little bit higher gold per minute, but honestly, it really doesn't matter to the bubbles. Um, he's just spamming out the waves and doing what he can, so he's pretty safe right now. He just wants that level 6, and he's going to start that roam. And be able to do it a lot more effectively in the silhouette end. Yeah, with that, uh, Kelp Field could be pretty big. Double Minotaur is coming up here, though. Archer Tiger looking for a kill. Bubbles in trouble. And will use the Shell Surf. 
Minotaur stun just a quarter of a second late right there. Whew. Middle lane though. Hammerstorm in trouble. The Rotten Grass comes out. There's the charge shot. The Glacial Blast fall up inside of the Acid Bomb. And see you later, Alucard. You might have been at 270 gold per minute, but Edward's going to break 200 now with that kill. Yeah, now Tempest level 6. It actually looks like they're pushing up the lane. Uh, Devil getting close to level 6 as well. Tempest level 7, actually. Level 4 elementals going to be coming out. Uh, tower push looks like, okay, he, he has a port up. Aluna, Aluna is trying to spam back the wave. Forcing Glyph to be used either way. And that's going to cause some rotation, probably. I mean, Hammerstorm Aluna is not enough to defend this. So either they have to concede or they have to rotate with more heroes. Either way, it's a bad time. Bottom lane, Demented Shaman in trouble. Magnus follows up the Hammerstorm stun with a Lava Surge. The middle timer goes down, and Demented Shaman trying to get away. Great body blocking here by the Hellborn melee heroes. Demented Shaman get a cut a tree. Another Lava Surge is available, and there's the K or the uh, heal coming in. Demented Shaman actually going to survive the health potion used, but no, the hammer finishes him off. Ophelia heal keeping these two melee heroes alive. There's another chase going on over here. Is Aluna going to use the Emerald Lightning and try to keep going, sipping on this bottle? Going to get into the tier 2 tower right now. Magnus showing up, has the Lava Surge available and the Hellborn team could be going for a little bit of a turnaround right here. There's the Lava Surge going out and Minotaur Catman combination is coming in. There's the Emerald Lightning into the Catman slow. Elemental Void but Tempest goes down. Bubbles gonna use the Shell Surf. Comes on over. I don't know. This is crazy. Hey, Aluna. He's crazy. Yeah, he's going in he, right he's here. He's using the Bottle Charge while he's attacking though to get Mana for his Rotten Grass. I mean, he's moving forward. Use the Bottle Charge. Get the Mana for Rotten Grass while you're doing it. He got sent back either way. Wasn't that big of a deal. So that makes sense as to why uh, maybe he wasn't too committed for that plan. But meanwhile, during all that, Silhouette getting the tower kill, so all of that early advantage being uh, a bit, a bit, not, not a bit thrown, pretty heavily thrown there uh, in the end by Legion team, just overextending, man. And, yeah. and the rotation from Ophelia, and the rotation from Ophelia. And then the Waste the Elemental Void on top of that, um, Golden Experience, uh, pretty equal. They, they did a great job, but I'm actually putting it a bit favoring the Hellborn team at this point. Yeah, absolutely, and, with this uh, Silhouette farming well. What's up, man? I, I gotta tell you, as frustrated as I was with the their, their draft overall and how I felt like they should have had Rally, what have you, I actually do favor their team in this matchup moving forward. Uh, how it uh, turned out, the well-balanced nature of it. Uh, still, Hammerstorm's not bad by any means. I feel like Rally could just been an explicitly better uh, pick in my book, but I don't... Yeah, you know, I, don't, I don't feel like it's the worst thing in the world, so I feel like at the current pacing of the game and uh, just how well-rounded they are, I do feel like I have to hand it to them. Yeah, I, I think that they've done very well. One of the more important things is shutting down that Deadwood, who did have to take three early trips to town. Lava Surge going to be used in the bottom lane. Eruption is there as well, and Dimension Shaman gets the defensive master's call, turns it around with the Entangle. Glacial Blaster there as well, and Magnus has no points in Steam Bath. He goes down to the three-man rotation of the Legion team. Middle lane, Deadwood in some trouble as the double stun comes out, and there's the Rotten Grass. The Hammerstorm stun is there, and see you later, Nahoy. The Hellborn team picks up another uh, kill. One for one exchange. Yeah, one for one exchange on different uh, sides of the map, at least. New Earth's Busting coming out uh, from Ophelia. I'm more of a. What was that for at that point? I think I missed it. Uh, I think she was just healing her creeps so that she can go yeah, for probably. a push, maybe. But... Yeah, I couldn't tell how low they were, but she wasn't at the tower yet, so that's why I didn't know. Uh, either way, bottom tower getting low. Ophelia's rotation is here. And there's the Entangled Glacial Glass. Charge shots there as well. Lava Surge back in. Tower goes down. Tempest does not have the Elemental Void. The Brute Strength auto attacks in the uh, Hammerstorm stun. Gonna finish him off. We'll see you later as Zolar actually gets a kill with the Elementals, finishing off a Luna. I, and doing more. He's... I, I had turned the camera off of that one, man. Did, was that just uh, yeah, well played no, by Tempest? Yeah, no, there was the Elemental and pounded in for Sophilia back a little bit there too. Uh, in, in the end, a one for two trade, so a uh, Legion team keeping it up. Bubbles rotating back towards the Silhouette who, um, you know, he had the free tower kill at that point. He's had a free farm lane for quite a while. Zero, one, and zero, so, uh, you know, playing a little bit of World of Warcraft here in the top lane. Yeah, the uh, problem just yesing and stacking up where you can, but so at the PVE player, Deadwood looking for a rotten grasp here. Stormcloud goes out as well. The Willowmaker and see you later, Alucard.
that's exactly what Deadwood needed to happen. Picking up a kill right there with the assistance of the Demented Shaman. And so Deadwood, he got stunted by those early uh, fallbacks, but starting to close the distance with a kill onto Alucard. That helps, and, well, certainly looking good for the Legion team. I'd like to see some more rotation out of this Bubbles, though. It's been four minutes since he used that Kelp Field, and that's a very, very good ganking and teamfight utility spell. So, I mean, they found the angles that went for the bottom push oh, already. Now they're me. trying to go for the silhouette. Who did get stunned? Uh, Master's call coming out onto the Tempest. Who's going to be in range here? Oh, no. And there's the Ophelia heal as well. Tempest not going to be able to get into range. Oh, the stun going to be coming out here. Death Lotus and Bubbles in some trouble. He goes down to the power throw. It's going to connect onto Master of Arms. Ophelia rotation coming in as well. Tempest going to be trying to TP on out. And the Minotaur stuns are going to be able to clean up Master of Arms. Tempest gets out of there. And, hmm. Thought that they were going to be able to get that kill into Silhouette, but that Master's Call, I don't know if that was onto the right target. Uh, it was okay that it was on Tempest if they sort of played it differently. The way Tempest ran, there was a point where he could have stunned the bubbles if he had a vision of him, but at the point where he was within stun range, I believe, or it was close, he was um, just out of reach when he had vision. When he had stun range, the, the, who was running there? Uh, it was the Master of Arms and the Tempest and the Bubbles that were up there as Lava Surge, or excuse me, a Glacial Blast going on onto Hammerstorm. Willowmaker onto Ophelia. She does not have the heal available. She's going to go down to the Shell Surf. Song of the Sea silencing Hammerstorm as well. And Bubbles trying to put in those autos. There's the Rotten Grasp. See you later, Vampire. Not getting out of this one. There's the Oak Bolt and the Auto Attacks finish off Alucard. Jeez. Team Psycho picking up three, defending their tower. And they're even going to grab some Ophelia minions. Yeah, uh, no, I was say who are they actually chasing down? Silhouette. Yeah, they were chasing down Silhouette, yeah. When, when Silhouette was in sun range, I believe he was in fog, and then when uh, he was out of sun range and they had vision, he was rotating around the tree, so just out of reach there. So, yeah, maybe on the wrong target, otherwise they seemed to surround him a little bit differently, but yeah, he did escape in there. But, wow, they stayed way too long there, and then, you know, Team Psycho was quick to capitalize. So, uh, I, I, honestly, Trey Kroger just... I, you can tell that not the most experienced playing together uh, and Team Psycho they actually do scrim a lot they're not known at being on the top of the scene but they do keep active they do keep active uh, I have seen them scrimming so it goes sense it shows I mean it makes sense as to why uh, they're displaying the, the little bit edge up here on the teamwork yeah they're looking pretty good Deadwood clear cutting pretty hard right now Looking for that silhouette, perhaps, and does have the Willowmaker available in 8 seconds, but a great red power throw might put a stop to this push right now. Rotten Grasp, uh, get a miss, and Silhouette gets hit by that Stormcloud, so gonna have to fall back. That is a level 2 Stormcloud, so it's gonna really keep her out of commission for about another 15 seconds. Well, 10 seconds. Yeah. What can we see? He said that would have well, an edge here on Saluna looking for an angle to initiate, but There's nothing yet. Hammerstorm using a stun to try to hold back the, the creep wave, still not choosing to initiate just yet. Looks like they do want to force the issue. Elemental Void is up, as said. Uh, the, the Demented Shaman ulti also coming up in six, five, six seconds here, so really, really close. And that Deadwood combined with the Demented Shaman ulti, man, nothing should survive. Nothing should survive. Oh, absolutely not, and Magmus is not there yet. He's going to show himself, so the Legion team now well aware. Will they take this opportunity to try to engage? Mag does have a TP on him. 3.5 second TP to this Tier 2 tower. There's the Stormcloud going out. Hammerstorm's done on to 2 this time. Minions coming in from the bottom. Deadwood is there. Rotten Graft Willowmaker onto Aluna. Ophelia Hill going to be going out immediately. Kelpfield catching to Aluna is going to drop. Lava Surge onto the Tempest. The Hellborn team is completely retreating right now. Fork Lightning coming in. And the Hammerstorm stun turning around onto Tempest. The cape going to be used. And there's the uh, Elemental Void coming in. Tempest going to survive for now. Shell Surf comes in as well. Hammerstorm going to be the one that drops. Tempest goes down to a follow up Lava Surge. Bubbles using the Song of the Sea trying to get out of there. A buyback onto Bye both backs. Aluna and Hammerstorm. Storm. They're going to be trying to come in, and the Hellborn team not going to oh, be able no. to connect with that Lava Surge. Magnus Bubbles has another out. one in eight seconds. Bubbles, Bubbles is out. gone. So is everybody else. Those buybacks defend the tower, but no additional kills. Yeah, no one cares about defending the tower with a buyback, man, if you're buying back. I mean, they do if it's like your base tower, but for defending an outer tower, a buyback is there to potentially convert it into hero kills. So in terms of that, they definitely took a huge loss, and that's something to take in mind even more so when you're looking at the gold and experience disparity that some of the gold was spent on buybacks. 
Um, Coral Key now picked up by Deadwood a little bit before uh, Magnus. Not much, though. They're both going to have it at pretty similar timings. Uh, that, the, the, the key part about that Portal Key is the synergy it has with the Demented Shaman ult, because as their defending towers are even playing aggressively, the Demented Shaman Storm Cloud goes down to the enemy team. Um, they wait, they wait, they wait, and then when Pebbles, uh, Deadwood decides it's time to go in, and when the Minus Armor is accumulated enough, he goes in, uh, just gets that one shot instant give onto whoever he chooses, and well, can walk away from there. It's going to be onto whoever he chooses, provided that he can get levels. He's still level 8 right now. Actually, the lowest level on his team below his support Master of Arms. Um, he's not going to be looking for that level 11 uh, ultimate, the level 2 ultimate, for quite some time. So really do want to see some solo experience on this Deadwood so that he can pick up that level 2 Willowmaker. Magnus going in. Lava Surge onto two right here. Hammerstorm is coming in as well. There's the stun onto the Demented Shaman. Meteor going to be dropped as well. Hammerstorm activating Brute Strength. Backs up as the Defensive Master's Call is used on the Demented Shaman. Charge on onto Silhouette though. The Willowmaker goes out on her. Silhouette drops immediately. Shell Surf going to be coming in right now. And there's the TP going to bring Ophelia into this fight. Ophelia goes down though. Hammerstorm going to try to go for the Denying of the Tower, but not going to happen. Magnus, Aluna, and Hammerstorm all going to fall back. And the Legion team, Team Psycho. Uh, they are looking to make quick work of the series. They are, man. Uh, they didn't even have Elemental Void up for that fight. Just uh, completely laying waste. I would picking up another level there, and they're instantly rotating uh, into the Congor pit here. So I'm, I'm not sure this is going to be something they, they can actually accomplish with the Elemental Void still being down. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm checking here for Vision. It looks like they do have a ward down here uh, in Santarius on the other side of the river, so I'm not sure if they hugged at the wall close enough to be undetected. No one's really rushing to the pit. We see uh, Dark Green farming the bottom lane, so seemingly oblivious to what's going on. Aluna actually going a power throw, though, having a hint, and going to reveal their attempt here. Yeah, Force so them the off team Forces them back indeed. There are five players here, but Stormcloud going out once again. Shell Surf, no Song of the Sea just yet. Uh, Hammerstone coming over. Great Rotten Grass. The Hammerstone only hitting Master of Arms. Silence on to two. The Ophelia Hill going to be going out right here. Hammerstone getting slowed down by the Entangle. Ophelia going to be the first one to drop. Defensive Master's Call on a Master of Arms. The Eruption Lava Surge helping out, though. As uh, down goes the Ophelia and the Hammerstone. Magnus not able to take out anybody. Master of Arms finally drops, but Aluna goes down to a Rotten Grass. And four Legion players up versus Justice Magnus with no ult. The resource advantage getting pretty damn large, and this is now a free Condor. Yeah, another making faces in all chat at this point. And <laughs> um, uh, anyway, yeah, that is that is going to be a free Condor. Uh, on top of this, I mean, we talked about Deadwood not going to be hitting level 11 for a while. After that one team fight, after a little bit of soul farm there, uh, and this Condor kill, he should be very, very, very close, man. Actually, he's not going to be an experience range for Congor. Team, let him get an experience range. Team? Team? <laughs> nope. Uh... Well, not going to be hitting that level 11 just yet, but the token of life is acquired now by Demented Shaman. He did choose to go on that pretty tanky route with the Sacrificial Stone and the Gnome's Wisdom. Soul's that Bulwark. The next would be phenomenal. Yeah, I, I would like to see that one as well. Especially since he is going to be hitting level 16 very, very quickly. Well, exactly, exactly. Already ahead of the curve, so uh, absolute monster duration there in 30 seconds, 40 second cooldown. So uh, very it's, little window of time where they're just not going to get absolutely torn apart by this Deadwood. It's longer than 30 seconds, isn't it? Isn't it like 34 seconds or something? 36 I think maybe? Six seconds. Maybe. You might be right there, but uh, of course, some like negative 30 armor, plus 30 armor for the team on that. If you're not aware of what that Staff of the Masters does, it's just an absolutely insane item, especially if you can get it up very early. And unfortunately, the Silhouette pick has been completely... It's had no impact on this game so far. So what got that early seconds. farm, but... All right. Plus you six seconds you win this round, Emperor. Increases the radius of the cloud from 600 to 800 as well. It's okay. I'll win the next two. Wow. Uh, Somebody's cocky. That's that's, that's okay. Uh, Hammerstorm <laughs> here. Okay, we, we did finally see the Blessed Orb picked up by Silhouette, so one step closer to that Null Stone, which uh, Dead would be looking to break with that Oak Bolt anytime he chooses to initiate on her. So she's going to have to be pretty quick. Uh, outside of that, I mean, Barrier Idle Route, uh, aim for by Tempest instead, not really going for that. Uh, earlier Shrunken Head, given the fact that he is against Ophelia and, you know, the interaction with the King's Grasp, even through Shrunken Head, there is a counter, so going for the, the, the quick team fight items provides a 
a benefit that you it's not really chancy, you know, you're guaranteed to always be able to get that barrier idle off pretty much. It's gonna make you too tanky to have the front load damage to kill him. So you can't really target the Tempest at that point. He's able to provide the team support. So oh, they're oh, going in. Willowmaker right here onto Hammerstorm. Stormcloud goes out and the Forked Lightning finishes off Hammerstorm. Ophelia heal just a little bit too late right there. The finger's not fast enough on Archer Tiger, and that's now no Ophelia, no Hammerstorm. This defensive tower going down. Buyback on Hammer immediately. Going to rely on a big eruption here on Magnus. Pull back He's and wait. Off to the Pull side. Back and wait. Wait for the double punch. There's no. They're not farming anything at this point. Uh, the Null Stone's up on Silhouette. Doesn't matter. She's still not going to do much damage against this uh, huge defensive force coming out from the Storm Cloud and the Ophelia. Not the Ophelia, the Demented Shaman, I should say. And the Master's Call. Not going to be able to put enough damage yet. So, uh, yeah, just wait it out. Wait for the punch. Steal some farm. Yep, that's exactly what they're going to do. Heading on over to the Ancients. Going to go ahead and work on that farm. 412 GPM, 416 GPM. Make it 419 GPM. Cemented Shaman. Going to be uh, possibly on his way to that Staff of the Masters. Of course, other items like a Push Stick or even a Storm Spirit are quite common on Demented Shaman. Um, but uh, I would love to see that staff only going to be about 1400 gold off of that one if that's the route that he chooses, which means we could see that by 25 minutes. Yeah, wow, wow. I'm saying look at Dementia. I'm, I'm pretty sure even if they wanted to, they couldn't drop the, the initial life full of Demented Shaman uh, with their front load combo. I mean, they have to get everything focusing onto him. Uh, pretty much perfectly with none of his spells getting off and due to the nature of how he's going to position himself on top of the fact that they have a barrier on now he has the vestments they're going to have an astral lave on top mm -hmm. of it and the master's call uh yeah i'm pretty sure there is no answer and even if they do uh manage to slay him whoop think again they have jesus dimension shaman there with the token of life so <laughs> that's gonna, gonna be uh bringing himself back up bringing others back up i don't even know at this point uh there's was that an astral lave? no they what was that that was just finished on Tempest? Was that the Barry Idol that he just got? Yeah, it was the Barry Okay. Uh, I want to point out... <laughs> the where... Astrolabe. Yeah, I was like, he's had that forever. I thought he already had the Barry Idol as well. Where Rape nope. is right yeah, now, he he's actually going to get caught up by this Bubbles in about five seconds. Uh, Bubbles has been shell surfing into that location like every time they're actually pressed up. Actually goes a little bit further up this time. There's the Hammerstorm stun. Good take cover. Dimension Shaman could be the only one caught out. If they had caught Magnus with that, he would have immediately been dropped by this Deadwood. Um, we'll see if Rocky Balboa does actually bring that one back a little bit. He's really looking for this Magnus, but not finding him just yet. Oh, he's going to go for the Magnus over here in another nine seconds. Oh, God. He wants him. I can't this watch is, this. I can't this watch is about it. to be oh, a disaster. No, no. Oh, no. Stop. Rocky Stop. Balboa, no! See ya, Magnus. <laughs> God. Damn it, man. <laughs> Hammerstorm Sun going to be going out onto two right here. And there's the Acid Bomb on, on to Hammer. More minus armor going to be coming in. And more Red Lightning Stun hitting Tempest. The Barrier Idol is going to be activated. Hammerstorm does manage to get out of there. The Melee Rack's in some trouble. Magnus does not have a buyback right now. And Demented Shaman going to be applying that Entangle onto the Silhouette Illusion. See you later, Melee Rack. To Trey Croner, man. They are very, very far behind without a response. There's a Glacial Blast coming in. Oh, three-man stun. This is what they were looking for. So I could be going up with the Death Lotus, but instead the Forked Lightning turnaround coming in, and Hammerstorm is forced back. The Legion team, they got what they came for, and they're out. They can just wait. They don't need to overcommit to anything, honestly, because every time it punches up, they're going to win the fight. I I have to say that was almost entirely Rampe's fault, in my opinion. That's a common spot to be hiding, and you see Bubbles checking every other location. You see him setting <laughs> up exactly... That spot a couple times. Yeah. He's like thoroughly exploring every single spot. Yeah. He's like, is Magnus here? Nope. And is Magnus here? No. I don't know. It, it's hard to say. Oh, Hammerstorm, you're done. Uh, legendary streak here for Denver Pro. And I, once again, this is definitely... Uh, Trey Kroner, they're not living up to the expectation here. And Team Psycho, they're playing phenomenally. This is definitely... A, this is a, Team Psycho's absolutely going insane right now, so... They want this, man. This is a team that... I mean, they were not seated anywhere near the top. I, I would think that they're probably not in the top eight, but I, they're taking out Trey Kroner right now, which is a pretty damn impressive feat. Dimension Shaman, 19 seconds left on the token. Taking a lot of damage here. The Emerald Lightning going to be going out. Magnus, meanwhile, is going for a counter push. Going to be able to take down 
uh, a base tower perhaps, but gonna lose a second set of racks. He's gonna have to TP back here in a moment after clearing out some creep wave, but he's not even coming back. The vote to concede comes up right here. Emerald Lightning gonna stun some creeps and GG well played coming out. That's gonna do it. Trey Croner taking out 2-0 by Team Psycho. Emperor, I would call this a pretty big upset. Yeah, but honestly, looking at Rocky Bowl as teams, I've seen them. I've seen them scrim. They've always done pretty decently. Yes. Uh, over there on Trey Croner, it was sort of like this mixed team for the tourney. Uh, didn't seem like... Uh, honestly, if I were to go... I know it's hindsight, and they did obviously lose this matchup. But if I were to go back and truly, uh, truly look at these teams, I, I might have been hard-pressed to actually say Trey Croner. Uh, it was just more seeing names like Tiger, like Rape, uh, initially just off the top of your head, you're like, oh, yeah. you know, that team, you're more comfortable seeing them at the higher echelon of the scene, whereas Rocky Bobo, they've been historically have been around the gold division level uh, during Hontor, so that, that plays a bit of a role into the initial judgment I pressed, but uh, seeing how they've grown and some of the, I've seen them have some upset games and do fairly well in scrims, it, it does make sense, and I'm, I'm really impressed with they were, what they were able to put out today. Uh, showcase a lot of excellent teamwork, a lot of team communication, pretty solid drafts. Uh, great job all around, man. So great. congrats to them. Great job indeed. Well, all right, guys, that does it for that series. A pretty quick one as Team Psycho advances into the round of eight. Their next opponent will most likely be the Lions Esports Club, the number one ranked team going into this event. And while well, that's going to be a very fun one, that match could be coming up here in about an hour and 20 minutes. And we most likely do have some other games still going on. So probably going to kick it to a break, investigate those games real quick, and then see if we can actually hop into a game already in progress. But we are going to go ahead and take a very short break right here. Guys, this is Honcast covering the Swedish Pride DreamHack qualifiers with Beef filling in for Breaky CPK and Emperor of the Honcast crew. Emp, before we go to that break, though, where can the good viewers find you? www.facebook.com, twitch.com, uh, twitch.tv, and Twitter all at...